Bow. Ba -da -da. Bow. It's Art with Big Mike. Starring ba -da -da. Big hey, Mike. Ah. I'm new to this experience of being photographed while I'm working. So I don't know what kind of teaching tool this is yet to be. Joe Videotape, I mean. Bass players like uh, uh, Neil Swainson and uh, the people watching. So I'll say, um, Lord. Al Foster, George Brown, speaking of bass players, and uh, the line. It's a learning process. Roberta, Art's always so, a learning process. Her CD. Sometimes you learn, sometimes you don't. Sometimes you take your creativity and go with it. Sometimes you're searching for more learning. I'm at a point where I'm searching for more learning in my art. Uh, specifically about drawing. I've heard a few instructors say, drawing is the tool to your art. I heard my brother say, the uh, Clayton Hamilton Lawrence Band. Douglas Morris. Backs a lot of different singers. And, uh, I heard him say, also does trio work. Jeff Hamilton even trio. in your music, sometimes you just got to do it. Uh, so. so doing it is that learning process. Um, I had opportunities to. And I would look for it. Probably. Well, that's it. Just can't say advance my art, but just would have spent more time in it, which would have advanced it. KUNV Las Vegas, the broadcast service of UNLV. I'm taking a certain route here. something about the abstraction. So what I'm doing here, instructor that I have, Greg, is basically telling me if I look at a drawing or something and be able to draw it, just like this dinosaur, this assignment was, was to put a dinosaur on a grid. Now I've known about grids, you could take a grid Okay, and you know how maybe you can blow it up on a wall, the picture that you have on that grid. You got a 12 by 12, uh, one, one foot by one foot piece of cardboard, whatever you have drawn on there, you can throw up on a 20 by 20 foot. 
So that's the principle I'm using here with my drawing. And Greg was saying something to me interesting. He said the old masters used the grid a lot of times. They visual. I guess they had the more, they didn't have the technical stuff, so they had to visualize kind of this grid behind everything or imaginary lines. Well, this is here, this is here, this is here, this is here. You have squares going this way. Well, this line is over here. This is same principle, grid. Okay, those of you that understand grid, if you don't understand grid in art, look it up. Basically, every one inch here I have here could represent 20 feet on a wall. Okay. So I drew this dinosaur the other day without a grid. And it came out pretty good. I like it. I have to develop it a little bit more. Hence, I'm going back to what they said about the grid. Um, this should work for anything. Anything that you draw, you have. I saw a book the other day on perspective, too. Perspective drawing. What makes this so interesting, I had kind of like to watch cartoons and see how cartoons were done. And, you know, some people were very good at animals. I heard one time Walt Disney, boy, if you can draw animals, Walt Disney will hire you. And I always thought about going after that kind of thing. But even though I have it at this period of time, I'm just doing this. I'm getting to some of this. I've done some pretty nice stuff before. I just didn't go all the way with it. I don't know how far I'll be able to go with this, but I'm attempting to take this into a full-scale picture 18 inch by 20 inch, 18 by 24, maybe something like that. Blow it up. Complete it. trying to take a drawing that I've done, a drawing that I've done and just take it to completion. Whether that's going to be in oil paints or I have some acrylics over there, whether I'm going to try to paint it in acrylics, whether I'm going to try to do it in marker, um, whether I'm going to try to do it in some kind of inks, you know. I don't think I'm going to be doing any airbrushing per se, but markers lend a certain thing and a certain type of airbrush lends to a certain thing. I'm going to see what I can do with what I have, what I can get. If I can get those certain things, I will. If I can't, I'll go to another medium. Uh, I also over here on the two canvases was going to do something with color. My, uh, getting back to that abstractual thing, I said uh, something in reference to color. Uh, color's a big interest to me right now, too. Uh, through an abstractual kind of picture, uh, palette knife, I don't know, whatever, wherever, it's gonna, wherever that will lead me. This will lead me to some drawing in, this will lead me to some color in. We'll see what happens in between. This late hour, I still got stuff to do. But I'm working on my art a little bit. This, like this. What kind of view am I going to get now? Almost standing directly over him. I, you've got to be able to draw this and imagine this and this whole imaginary thing that Pixar does. You know, a 
they talk about Andy Warhol being a visionary and doing new kinds of stuff. There's, boy, there's other people between technology and art. I told a friend of mine one time, oh yeah, computers will never take over art. <laughs> huh? But look, we're doing it on the grid. Pixar, we're doing it on the grid. Other people doing it on the grid. Trying to come up with the drawing, the viewpoint. And then taking that viewpoint into imagination and abstractness. It's a journey. It's a journey, it's a process. You do this, do this, do this. Sometimes we don't know how much time we have. So we'll do what we can when we can. <laughs>